this longest night your candle light keep watch over all the earth welcome hope and cheer as dawn draws near and rejoice rejoice in the sun's return hello today i have a story written by Catherine Davison called Porcupine and the Sky Mirrors. Long ago, when the world was new, the people of Siberia knew that Porcupine was a wise little fellow who could solve any problem. He was also a good neighbor and a careful farmer. Because Porcupine was so good-hearted and kind, he had a full social life, as you can imagine. He was even a friend to the Sky King. And one day, Porcupine paid the Sky King a visit. The Sky House was a splendid place. Its walls were slabs of sparkling ice and ice bells tinkled cheerfully in every room. But the finest thing of all were the two huge mirrors that stood at either side of the fire. One was made of gold and the other of silver. And they reflected the fire's light so brightly that it shone through the walls of ice and lighted the whole earth. Porcupine and the Sky King enjoyed themselves very much. They drank hot, sweet tea poured from a shiny samovar. They ate a great many honey cakes and told funny stories. At last, it was time for Porcupine to go home. The Sky King said, Friend Porcupine, take something with you so you will think of me and remember this wonderful visit. I don't need a gift to remember this enjoyable day, said Porcupine. You've given me your fine hospitality, and that is enough. Save your gift. The Sky King tugged at his long mustache and shook his head. No, no, I insist, he said firmly. I want to give you something from my Sky House. It would be bad manners for you to refuse. Porcupine said, well then, since I live a long way away, I'll take something to eat on the way home. Thank you. The Sky King was pleased, and he gave Porcupine a leather bag of delicious black bread. The King even walked part of the way home with him to make the way seem shorter. On the road, whom should they meet but the Earth King? Hello, brother, said the Earth King to the Sky King. You're a long way from our home today. Oh, I was just coming to visit you, brother, said the Earth King. But I got a late start. My goodness, how bright it is up here in the evening sky. You see the light from my fire, answered the Sky King. Then. The Sky King embarrassed his brother and said, and I'm delighted that you're here to visit me. Please stay for dinner and perhaps my friend Porcupine will come back and join us. It would be like a real party. Well, of course, Porcupine never refused a friend's request and he could not resist the idea of a party. So the three of them went back through the cold northern sky to the Sky House. When they got there, the Sky King laid out more good things to eat and drink. He built up the fire and set candles in every window until the northern lights flickered all over the sky. Everything was so cheerful and beautiful that the Earth King became just a bit envious of his brother. His Earth house was a rather dark place made of tree trunks and located in a gloomy forest. 
when in spite of this little stab of envy, the earth king enjoyed himself very much. He sat beside the warm fire and feasted on tiny salted fish and rich red soup. He ate three kinds of black bread with two kinds of caviar and four kinds of cheeses and for dessert. There were rosy apples and more honeycombs. He drank many glasses of hot tea and laughed at the funny stories Porcupine and the Sky King told. He even told stories of his own. But at the same time, he couldn't help wishing that his house was as pretty and cheerful as his brother's. The Sky King enjoyed the visit too, and when it was time for his guests to go home, he said, please take something to remember me by. Porcupine answered, no, nothing for me. I still have that nice black bread you gave me before. But, but you must have something more, I insist, the, cot, the Sky King said. So Porcupine took a little piece of goat's milk cheese to go with the bread and he promised to eat it on the way home. Then the Sky King turned to the Earth King. And you, brother, what will you take to remember our visit? Now, all evening, as the Earth King admired the Sky House, the things he liked best of all, were the shining mirrors on either side of the fire. More than anything else, the Earth King wanted those mirrors. Oh, um, I don't need a gift, thank you, he said, looking at the beautiful mirrors. But you must take something, I insist, said the Sky King. Well, then, if I have to take something, give me those two mirrors. They will look very nice on each side of my own fireplace, Earth King said. Oh, said the king, the Sky King. Oh, my goodness. He didn't really want to part with his sky mirrors. He had expected the Earth King to choose something small the way Porcupine had done. But it would have been extremely bad manners to refuse. So very sadly, he took the sky mirrors and gave them to his brother. The Earth King took the mirrors and went home. Porcupine went home too, but the Sky King didn't walk even a little part of the way with them. The next day, it was dark. And the next day, too, the Sky King sat by his fire, feeling gloomy because his house seemed very dull without his sky mirrors. Well, anyway, I did the right thing. Thing, the king said to himself. On earth, Porcupine's farm was not doing well anymore, and neither were his neighbor's farms. I'm worried about this, he thought to himself. What if the world is never bright and warm again? The mirrors must be returned to the sky house where they belong. Porcupine considered that problem all day long, and the next day he went to pay a visit to his friend, Earth King. When Porcupine got to the Earth House, the Earth King was very glad to see him. Hey, sit down and have a cup of tea, he said. How have you been, dear Porcupine? Not as well as usual, Porcupine said truthfully. It has been pretty dark at my house. Without the sky mirrors, I can no longer see the light of your brother's fire. And because there is no light at all, the crops are dying. The Earth King didn't like that answer. 
he pulled crossly on his mustache. Um, where are the mirrors anyway? asked Porcupine. I, I thought you would have them standing by your fire. Well, they are, they are too beautiful to leave lying around. I put them away so nothing would happen to them, said the Earth King. Porcupine looked around, but he couldn't see the mirrors anywhere. The Earth King made tea in his big samovar, and he got out some honey cakes. The food was good, but somehow the stories they told each other didn't seem very funny, and the visit was a little sad. To tell the truth, the Earth King felt very sorry that the Earth was now so dark and cold, but he couldn't bear to give back those beautiful mirrors. When it was time for Porcupine to go, the Earth King said politely, please take something with you so that you will remember your visit. Oh no, nothing, said Porcupine, but I insist you take something, perhaps some nice bread and cheese. No, thank you, said Porcupine slowly. Then, just as he was speaking, he noticed something that gave him a wonderful idea. But since you insist, Porcupine continued slowly, I will ask you for a mirage. One of those images in the air that look real, such as a lake in the middle of the desert, one of those. The Earth King was surprised and unhappy at this request, but a, a mirage is, is just a reflection of light in the air. I can't give you that. Oh, well, never mind, said Porcupine, pretending to be disappointed. You, well, you have plenty of echoes in the Earth house. Will you give me an echo instead? The Earth King tugged on his mustache so hard that he had to stop very suddenly because he hurt himself. It was terrible manners to refuse something to a guest. But how could he give a mirage or an echo? Ask me for something I can really give to you, said the Earth King. Porcupine shrugged his shoulders and looked sad, but he was really happy because several minutes before his sharp eyes had noticed something interesting. Beside the front door stood a large old box. Under the lid, Porcupine could see a tiny spark of light. He had guessed that it was the sky mirror, and now that the Earth King had refused him twice, he certainly would not refuse his third request. Well then, said Porcupine, I guess I'll just take Whatever is in that box over there, since I must take something. The Earth King was furious. He pulled on his mustache so hard his eyes watered. He couldn't refuse Porcupine. I have good manners. I have very good manners, he said. Take it. He tried to sound generous. Porcupine got the mirrors, and ran away. He went to the sky house and met the sky king. Hey, I've brought you a present, old friend, he said. When the sky king opened the box, he saw the mirrors. He was very happy.
He ran and set the mirrors beside his fire, and at once the firelight flashed all through the sky house and down over the earth. Only then Sky King turned to Porcupine and said, Thank you, old friend. And that is the end of Porcupine and the Sky Mirrors. And at the time when we welcome back the light, we welcome peace as well. Deep peace of the running wave to me. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the shining star to you. Deep of the quiet earth to you.